Hello and welcome to The Trading Bell. I'm Noah Kipkimboy. Today we are discussing democratization of the market, opening up the financial markets to the masses. And also we'll take a look at technological trends that are reshaping the Kenyan financial market to make it more inclusive. Later on, I will speak to Nkoregamba Mwebesa, who is the CEO of the Central Depository and Settlement Corporation. But right now, we start with his profile. Nkoregamba Mwebesa is the Chief Executive Officer of CDSA, Central Depository Settlement Corporation. He has more than 25 years experience in the financial services sector in the East Africa region. Mobesa has been involved in a number of key landmark transactions, including multiple equity listings, debt listings, and rights issues, and on the East African exchanges. He has previously served as Managing Director of Stanley Kenya Limited, Chief Executive of SBG Securities Limited, and as the Chief Executive Officer of the Nairobi Securities Exchange. So, starting off with the current status, that we are facing as the world right now, the pandemic. From your perspective, how is your observation? What are you learning from this phase? Uh, it's, it's been a very interesting uh, eight to nine months, I'd say, uh, from a CDSC perspective. Um, we are quite fortunate that in the first quarter or the first three months of the pandemic, um, actually there was more activity uh, at the CDSC, more settlement going through. Um, I think as people are repositioning their portfolios, of, um, you know, this, both the global and, and local um, investors, and, um, we saw quite a bit of activity. So, so the, the, the market was, was actually quite active, even though prices were coming down and valuations were, were, were coming down. What that meant for CDSC is that um, we remained fairly financially stable as an institution. We were also able to continue to provide um, uh, services to all um, our clients and stakeholders. Um, that has tapered off a little bit in the last maybe six weeks, uh, but I'd still say um, that the market is still um, trading fairly, um, you know, at, at, a, at, at a steady pace. So. I guess the lessons from this, uh, unlike in other um, crises that we've seen uh, in, in our market, this time around, I think it's mostly the local institutions that have stepped up uh, to reposition their portfolios as the foreign investors have, have exited the market. So it's, it's, a, it's a learning point for, for, for the market in general and, and uh, for CDAC. Definitely. And speaking of learning point, for the market in general, you rolled out a product, you know, this, the practicing phase of it earlier on, securities lending and borrowing. This is a new concept that you introduced. It was supposed to be introduced earlier on, but you kick-started it earlier this year. Give us the progress and why is it important for this particular product to go full-fledged? Securities lending and borrowing is not necessarily a new concept. Um, I think this is something that's been happening in financial markets, including here in Kenya, but maybe in a more informal uh, environment. And what we're trying to do is to formalize it um, using the new system that we launched about a year ago, uh, the new CDS. Um, the benefits of this are really that um, uh, from a big picture point of view, um, we should be able to increase trading in the uh, secondary market for equities uh, because if people, if there's robust securities lending and borrowing, um, what securities that are, are, borrowed, uh, are borrowed to be sold in the market. And when you have to repay, uh, you have to go back into the market to buy them. So we are hoping that it will rejuvenate um, activity or, in, or help boost activity in the in the secondary market um progress um has been good so far in terms of um engagement with uh, various stakeholders um there's a lot of um, excitement in the market we are currently in a pilot phase we haven't had robust trading in the pilot phase but i think it's just a matter of time uh, we continue as the CDSC to engage with all stakeholders uh, to encourage them to come on board uh, and to test um, uh, in, in the pilot phase because the pilot phase is really in, um, 
in what you in, in the live environment, if you can put it that way, although we're in the regulatory sandbox of the Capital Markets Authority, which means they're monitoring what we're doing before we can really go live. Uh, so I'd say in terms of interest, um, we've got the right um, interest in the product. Um, uh, lots of people are preparing themselves. And, and hopefully, uh, once we kick off the live phase, um, we shall have a robust uh, platform for securities lending and borrowing. Definitely. And uh, speaking of interest, you're saying there's so much interest about this uh, particular product. Another product that was quite interesting, and you guys were really central in ensuring that this happens very efficiently, it was the Emma Kiba, which was a huge success. Uh, speak to us how, what you learned from that phase in, in terms of democratizing and opening up you know, securities like Kenyans generally being able to invest in some of these financial instruments. Well, thank you. And thank you for actually um, agreeing that it was a success. We don't get that uh, often um, from many observers of <laughs> Emma Kiba. Indeed, it was a success in that we were able to demonstrate that it is possible. Uh, and when I say we, I'm talking to the wider um, uh, stakeholder group that was involved in Makiba, the issuer themselves, the National Treasury, um, and uh, our sales and the stock exchange, and Arabic Securities Exchange, we were able to demonstrate that it is possible uh, to have a mobile-based issue of a government security um, that gets to, uh, to, to many people. I mean, we had uh, a fairly huge number of people invested. In that perspective, as a as a, as a test case, if I can call it that, uh, Emma Kiba was very successful. And it has proven to us that it is possible to use those channels uh, to reach, uh, to, to get to the bottom of the pyramid as far as uh, the uh, investing arena is concerned. Uh, so um, I think that the further iterations will probably be more successful in terms of the capital that we shall be able to raise because we have um, a, lo a lot of lessons that we've learned from, uh, from the first um, um, iteration of Emma Kiba. Uh, we, there is work ongoing on a second iteration or uh, Emma Kiba 2.0, I think is what um, uh, is currently being referred to. But I think for CDSC, the learnings are that that platform that we provided uh, to the National Treasury can actually be uh, transformed um, in, and used for other uh, securities definitely and even speaking about deepening the the sector and more involvement or inclusivity because the financial markets it has been seen as a reserve for the few in in the country looking at the engagement in, in our markets you find that 60 percent is foreign uh, hugely dominated by foreigners so is there a deliberate effort uh, to make sure that that tide is, is being balanced so that we see more local players in the game? I think, I think um, how do I answer that question? Um, one, our markets are global. They're open to all investors. So it's not necessarily a bad thing that um, we have more foreigners trading on a daily basis than you do locals. But having said that, we'd like to encourage obviously the locals to, to trade more. And um, We've actually seen that happen, like I said, in the first quarter of this year, um, especially after the um, exit of foreigners uh, with the uh, crisis that came with the pandemic. We saw the local institutions um, uh, pick up a lot of these um, um, equities, um, especially from the blue chip companies, uh, Safaricom, um, KCB, ETC. So, um, we already see that, unlike in the past, when our local investors would sit on the sidelines, when opportunities like this emerged, uh, they have actually taken advantage in this um, in, in this period, and and so I think it's 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 uh, we we, shall, we will see more of that. Um, but what can we do to um, improve uh, local participation? Um, I think interventions um, or platforms such as um, the SLB, uh, Securities Lending and Borrowing. Uh, platforms that allow democratization, uh, such as uh, the Emma Kiba platform, will definitely help bring more uh, local investors uh, into the market. 
um, the money that is being traded by foreign investors at the end of the day belongs to individuals. And uh, this is a no brainer. Uh, we need to see how best we can get uh, retail investors into vehicles that allow for pooling, that allow for critical mass to be able to make those kind of investments. Uh, uh, and, and that way we can probably bring some balance to the market. Um, so I, I, where, from where I sit, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing as long as the markets are trading, but certainly we shall be making interventions uh, together with our partners and stakeholders such as the Nairobi Securities Exchange, the Capital Markets Authority, and the National Treasury to see how best uh, to get more participation from uh, local investors. All right. And the tech component, uh, your company is very tech-centered, technology-centered. Maybe give us some information in regards to the technology at play and projecting into the future. Are we experiencing uh, changes in terms of utilization of technology to deepen our financial markets? Okay, that's a good question. And uh, yeah, certainly at CDSC, we like to say and think that we are a technology-driven company. Um, the CDS is the backbone of our operations. And um, as I mentioned earlier, we launched a new uh, system um, in um, uh, about a year ago, in October uh, 2019. So um, this new system is coming in two phases. We've completed the first phase and bedded it down. Um, we are happy with its progress. Uh, most of the bugs that um, uh, we, um, we found at the beginning have been fixed. And um, we are now moving into the development of the second phase. Uh, the first delivery for that will be full um, ability of the system to use uh, swift messaging. I think that will improve the operations for most of our uh, central depository agents, in particular the custodian banks. And um, again, uh, those that deal with global custodians and foreign investors, there'll be better uh, communication um, post trade uh, for what's happening in the market. So uh, we are quite excited about that. Um, there'll be other bells and whistles that will come with um, with phase two, um, including um, an API uh, that will allow uh, connectivity for our CDS to be able to do a lot more remote um, online real time processing. Uh, both pre-trade and post-trade uh, of their operations. Um, we believe that should also help, um, you know, increase trading activity. So for example, what we're saying is that um, uh, a client of a CDA, say a stock broker on the Nairobi Securities Exchange should be able to open a CDS account remotely, online, real time, and um, start trading as soon as uh, all protocols have been approved. The other thing that we shall be looking at closely is new technologies. Well, not so new anymore, but uh, things like blockchain that allow decentralization of registries. You know, the core of our existence is that we provide a registry for all these securities. And so um, we'll be seeing how to use that to, again, like uh, we've talked about earlier, democratize the space as much as possible. Um, we are in um, discussions with several uh, parties on how to do that. Um, it has been done by some CSDs across the globe, um, and um, uh, we'll see how to make that successful uh, in, in, in Kenya. So there's a lot happening on the tech side of things as far as CDAC is concerned. Um, and as and when we're able to actualize, obviously we shall be informing the market. But I think the message to the market is that we're not sitting back and just, um, you know, uh, sitting on our laurels. We, we continue to try and improve uh, all our systems, and in particular, the, the main operating system, the, the CSD. Awesome. Indeed, we shall be on the lookout for, you know, the new systems and also being able to take advantage of as you open up the market uh, with the term democratizing the market for more Kenyans to participate and more people to participate. Always a pleasure talking to you, Mr. Ngoregamba Mwabesha. CEO, Central Depository and Settlement Corporation. But right now, we want to take a look at the markets. 
with minor check. Time for the market's analysis and joining me to help us with these numbers is Kevin Gigi, Senior Trader Equities Market at Genghis Capital. Many thanks for joining us, Kevin. Thank you for having me. Great. When I look at the markets, it looks like there's no move at all. Nothing that we can really take home about, especially throughout the month, looking at the index and all. What's your comment on this? I mean, you're right. The market has generally been flat. Mm -hmm. If you're looking at it month to month, mm -hmm. uh, we haven't seen much movement on the on the blue chips, which is your NSC20. Yes. We've seen some movements here and there on mm -hmm. the low-cap stocks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thus, you'd see some tick on the NSC all share, mm -hmm. but nothing to write home about. Okay. So, yeah, it's been a flat month. Let's talk about the month-to-month -month movements. Mm -hmm. And uh, just looking at the numbers, especially at the index, barely a movement. But I see that over the month, the 20-share index lost. Yes. What's your comment on that? I mean, if you look at the 20-share, from what I just said earlier, mm -hmm. it's... Uh, it, you know your banking stocks, your safari com, generally the large cap stocks, yeah. Mm -hmm. You'd see some 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 loss on those stocks, especially mm -hmm. since foreigners were dumping some of those stocks yeah. based on everything that is happening. Okay. You know, we had an election just next to us in Tanzania. Mm -hmm. We have an election in, in the US. Uh, generally in the flight to safety, these mm -hmm. guys tend to dump what they're holding in okay. in the lower uh, countries. Yeah. So once they sell that off, you'd see that tick on the NSC twenty five. In, in the NSC twenty, sorry. All right. So yeah. I'll be right to say that that investors were being just cautious because of the uh, happenings around the world. Right? You'd be right too. Okay. Yeah. So let's look at the top gainers month to month again. Uh, looking at Standard Group, Jubilee Insurance, East Africa Cables and the likes. What's your comment on this? I mean, we saw, especially when you're looking at Jubilee, we saw yeah. it, uh, I think it's been up, what, 11% month on month. Okay. And that was the uh, purchase from the... Um, Foreign company, so into yeah. uh, hotel in East Africa, the new in generally the yeah. new partnership. Okay. So that, of course, uh, due to the new liquidity coming into the company mm -hmm. and the fact that they are retaining most of their high earning uh, markets, yeah. made it uh, an attractive buy for those who are not holding and an addition for those who are holding it already. Okay. Some of the top uh, losers, uh, Can losers, you then you look that? at. Yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, you look at there's AABL there. You have your Centum Nation Media. Yeah. It hasn't been a really uh, easy time for media industry, especially in Kenya. Okay. I think generally uh, net they're down 42% okay. on revenues yeah. in performance across the board. Mm. So you know your media income, your, I mean your media revenues, all those streams, all the revenue lines have really gone down. So okay. it's been a tough time for them. Okay, let's jump yeah. into the weekly look of the markets and how they close. Before I get there, by the way, mm -hmm. how are we doing compared to the to our peers in the markets? We are doing well, I would say. Yeah. As much as we'd see, we've been flat. Yeah. Some markets, if you go to say, think they're down 5% on average. Mm -hmm. When you're looking at Lagos or Cairo, I think we're almost talking double digits. Wow. Well, that's based again on what's happening with our, with our brothers. Okay. I mean, there's unrest in, in, in Lagos. Yeah. Uh, both Lagos and Cairo have currency issues right. in terms of uh, they have dual um, our currencies, okay. our currency markets, yeah. the central bank and the non-official one. Mm -hmm. I mean, in Kenya, we sort of, other than uh, the political environment or heat starting to gear up, mm -hmm. I think we're doing pretty well. Okay, yeah. that's good news for us. It is. Now, let's look at, uh, you know, the occurrences that are about to happen. We've seen companies are gearing up for their announcements of results, half-year results and all, the safari comps, yeah. engines and all. Yeah. Are we seeing any pressure, especially for selling and the likes, or what are we expecting or looking up to? I don't expect or foresee uh, a big excitement yeah. from, from the half year numbers that we're about to see, especially say for Safcom. Mm -hmm. uh, we know how the environment has been for them. Okay. We know the transactions between uh, zero and a thousand have been zero rated. Yeah. Well, we might see some, uh, some tick in the fact that uh, their limits, their cash limits have also been increased, okay. say from 75,000 on the wallet to 140, mm -hmm. you know, in transactions up to 300,000 a day. Yeah. So it's tough to tell how okay. that will offset the zero rated uh, transaction. Okay. But at worst, I'd say the numbers would be flat. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does it look good, man? Yeah. Now, let's look at the weekly report and look at some of the top gainers. I'm seeing a lot of low cap companies uh, featuring in at the top gainers and even the losers. What's your comment on this? I mean, if you look at the lookup, especially when you have 
uh, I'd say a, a period like now where foreigners are not actively trading in our markets yeah. for all the obvious reasons that we mentioned, starting from the election yeah. and the risk to safety, you know, mm -hmm. and, and the uh, flight to safety. You, the market is then generally left to, to the local guys. And some of those, you know, would be looking for cash for school fees, cash for, you know, all the emergency uh, needs, cash for the festivities that are coming up. So they tend to buy or sell okay. some of those shares that they mainly own. And that's why you'd see the likes of Transcentury, Eva Radio, Chumi, mm -hmm. or in a buy opportunity uh, sh uh, shows up. Because some of these guys, I would tell you, they're guys who've been holding these shares for the longest, okay. just looking for any opportunity to exit. Excellent. So yeah. final comment on the weekly movers. Let's talk about the top movers, the usual blue chip companies. Any word on that? I mean, it's, it's obvious. If you yeah. look at the, uh, the names in there, mm -hmm. Safaricom. Again, the, uh, with a company with a market capitalization of one trillion Kenya shillings, <laughs> it's understandable. It's yeah. one of the best, I mean, companies. So anyone getting in, I think most financial advisors would tell guys to be safe, just get onto the blue chips. Mm -hmm. So that would explain your Safaricom being the top mover, okay. your Equity Bank, your Bamburi, your Centum, and your Bank of Kigali. All right, I'd like yeah. you to comment on uh, the inflation over the month of October. Uh, I don't know how the numbers were, but probably from your research, what have you seen? I mean, uh, in October, we saw an uptick to 4.84% on okay. the inflation. Okay. That's from around 4.2% uh, mm -hmm. in August. Yeah. The cost of these, uh, I was reading the report, was mainly due to the high cost of food and transport. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that really put in, and you can understand from energy uh, in terms of crude oil prices went up. Okay. I think we saw that uptick in our, in our pump prices, right. which in turn, of course, uh, looking at that in I mean, in tandem with, <laughs> with how we're sitting in our local matatus, That's true, the, right? the fares were increased, which really feeds into our CPI. Okay. So overall, month on month, we were up. I think it's the highest we've seen since May. Wow. Yeah. All right. Finally, November, people are gearing up for the primary bond announcements. Are we uh, looking forward for this issue? Yes, 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 we are. I think... Yes. Um, more so since COVID started, bonds have really been oversubscribed. Okay. I mean, they're the safest assets we have. Yeah. Any, gov any bank looking to, to price a loan, they start pricing it from the risk-free rate, okay. which is the rate that the government gives. So we've really seen a good appetite in bonds for guys looking to pack up cash, okay. especially during this time. And we know the government always uh, issues a bond every month. So yes, guys are really looking forward to it. And hopefully it becomes an infrastructure bond, which is really attractive due to the tax element. Great time yep. now for the Markets 101. All right, Kevin, today's lesson for the people who are watching is what are T-bills and what are T-bonds? I think the question is differentiating between T-bills and T-bonds. Over to you. All right, T-bills, T-bonds. T stands for Treasury, yeah. which is our national treasury. Okay. So we have the Treasury bills and the Treasury bonds. Mm -hmm. The main difference between the two is bills are shorter term yeah. and bonds from the name are long term. Yeah. So T-bills, we have three T-bills in Kenya. Okay. So we have the 91 day, yeah. 182 days, mm -hmm. and the 364 days. Okay. So basically three months, mm -hmm. six months, and one year. One year. Anything above that, yeah. which ideally starts from two years, becomes a bond. Okay. So it a, it's a treasury bond. Both of these are you and I lending to the government, mm -hmm. money which they'll return, okay. say in three months, six months, a year, or 20 years if it's a treasury bond. With some interest, definitely. Yes. <laughs> and that's how you make money. That's how you make the money. The other lesson for the day is what is the difference between a bear market and a bullish market? I mean, uh, I was reading about these two terms a while back while I was, I was getting into this industry. Yes. And uh, I saw actually the reason why they were named a bear market and a bullish market mm -hmm. is based on how the two animals fight. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so a bear market, I don't know what your guess would be how a bear fights. Like versus scratching a bull. Or yeah, So a bull would hit you, <laughs> a bull would, you're right, a bull would hit you with its horns oh, yeah? and lift you up. Yeah. A bear would, you know, it's, it's using its paws to, to scratch you, to hammer you down, basically. Yeah. Okay. So that's why they borrowed those two terms in terms of, are you hitting me to take me up? Or are you, point, you know, hitting you know, me, just to, scratching me to yeah, pull put me, me on the floor? Yeah, so a bear market is where, you know, prices are generally sort of dropping. Okay. And it's, uh, it's, it becomes sort of a, a turn, a trend. So if you look at it, say, month on month, you'd see it sort of the curve is sort of uh, flattening to down. Okay. A bullish market is where, you know, those whatever reason, an announcement, um, whatever reason that may be, mm -hmm. prices start to tick up over the long term okay. and becomes an upward trajectory on the yeah. trend. All right. Yeah. Many thanks for that. I hope you've gotten your lesson today. Time now for my favorite segment where it's your questions answered. And Kevin, we have two questions here. Number one is, if I invest in the money market fund, do I choose where my money will be invested? For example, shares of a particular company. 
I mean, it's a yes and no uh, kind of situation. When you go to a money market fund, mm -hmm. you have a right to choose what kind of fund you want. Yeah. You know, so do you want an equity fund? Do you want, um, you know, a fixed income fund? Yeah. Do you want a blended fund? Mm -hmm. So if you're investing, say, into an equity fund, mm -hmm. then that's the that's where your right ends. Yeah. You can't tell them, you know, I want you to buy Safaricom and equity and don't buy this. Yeah. It's that is left to the discretion of the of the fund yeah. managers, yes. you know. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if you're choosing a more, uh, you want the bond fund, yeah. then yes, you've just told them I need bonds, I don't need equities, okay. but the discretion to choose what they choose is them. Okay. But we do have what we call, mm -hmm. I think, discretionary or tailored mm -hmm. uh, investment mm -hmm. uh, funds that you can buy into. Okay. And basically they're just managing your money for you. You're a savvy investor, okay. and they tell them I want you to buy for me these and these and that. All right. So we do have that as well. So sometimes, you know, your observation, sometimes you can give an instruction. I want Correct. this company because it does well. Correct. Probably you've done your own research. Correct. Final question is if I happen to invest in a company and it collapses maybe you could mention some examples is there a guarantee I will get my money back <sighs> well again it's another yes and no yeah. so it depends on how invested in the company yeah. one were you an equity holder yeah. were you a debt holder mm. so if you're an equity holder means you bought shares into you know uh, the secondary market. If you're a debt holder, means you're holding a bond issued by the company. So in terms when the company is being liquidated, the first it goes there's priority in how uh, shareholders are paid. Yeah. So bondholders will have a priority over equity holders. Okay. So if you're holding debt with them, mm -hmm. yes, you'd you'd be paid if the cash was sufficient. Okay. If you if it was sufficient to pay the equity holders, yeah. which is rarely the case, really happens. Yes, you'd yeah. do that. But again, for equity holders, you're protected by. Uh, there's an organization, I think Kenya Deposit, yeah. uh, whatever it is, up to 50,000 Kenya shillings. All right, I hope you sufficiently answered. Right now, it's time for the historical fact for this week. That's it from us right here on the Trading Bell Show. I hope you've gotten your takeout from all that was prepared for you uh, since the first interview with the CDSC CEO. From our end, Kevin, many thanks for coming to demystify the numbers for us. You're welcome. And for you, the viewer at home, remember that every investment bears a risk. So think carefully. See you next week.